Here's the very interesting question to test your knowledge of rounding in Microsoft Excel. Technology startup company sent 46 members for an off-site training. At the training facility, they were organized into seven member groups. Which Excel formula do you need to use to calculate number of teams with all members, ignoring any remainders? You're presented with four different choices. Choice A, divide cell A2 by B2. Choice B, you use round down formula and supply A2 divided by B2 as a first argument and as a second argument you supply zero. Choice C, you use round formula and then supply A2 divided by B2 and second argument you supply as zero. And last but not least, you use round up formula and then in parentheses you supply division of A2 by B2 and second argument as zero. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Because on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it or have any other feedback or suggestions, please make sure to post in comments. I believe the correct answer here is choice B, round down. And the reason is because to solve this challenge, we need to use Excel formula, which rounds the number down to the nearest integer. To simulate this scenario in Microsoft Excel, let's use round down formula and you can see that it rounds a number down towards zero. And then let's supply arguments A2 divided by B2. And the second argument, which indicates how many digits we're rounding down to, would be zero. And then you see that the number of full-size teams is six. If you don't trust Excel like I do, uh, let's confirm the calculations by dividing the cell A2 by B2 without using any formulas and you see that the number here that was calculated is 6.5714 and the full number is 6 which meets our criteria for original question. Do you have a better solution? Please make sure your version and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question which is not as easy to solve as it seems. Alexandra used today function to retrieve the current date but it showed some decimal numbers. How should she fix the issue? You're presented with the snippet from Excel, which shows the date as well as the format in cell A2. And it shows that in the formula bar, it used the today function. And you need to select one of the four different choices. Choice A, wrong function used. Choice B, affected by regional settings. Choice C, wrong cell format. And then last but not least, choice D, data is centered in a cell. Do you know how to fix the error when using today function? Take a close look, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. On my end, I'm moving forward to share with you my version of the answer, but obviously if you have a better way to solve it or have a different answer, please make sure to post in comments. As you might have figured out, the answer is C, wrong cell format, but why? Let's jump to Microsoft Excel to see how we can solve the issues. I try to simulate this scenario in Excel and you see that cell A1 has a header and cell A2 has the actual value. And even though we typed today function here, the answer here and the value is 44961 instead of the correct today's date. The key to answer this question is in the data format. If you click instead of general and select short date, you see that it will be formatted to the today's date, which is February 4th, 2023. To understand the issue, we need to understand the today function in Excel, as well as what happened when Alexandra typed the function inside the spreadsheet. Today function in Excel is a built-in function that returns the current date as well as the date value. It's a volatile function, meaning that it recalculates whenever any worksheet containing the function is opened or changed. And this is obviously true because today's is changed and yesterday was a different today than today. So the today function is useful for displaying the current date in a cell. But in this scenario, Alexandra used wrong data format with today function. So as the solution, she needs to correct the data format to desired data format. Did you figure answer on your own? Or did you come up with the different answer? Please make sure to post your answer and solution in comments. I would like to ask you to participate in our daily assessment test challenge. I post new question every day in the community tab of YouTube channel and give you an opportunity to answer it and try it. And I post answer in comments next day. So please make sure to check it out to test your knowledge. And now let's continue and get you ready for the test.
Here is a wonderful question to test your knowledge of Excel formulas. Lisa is trying to use starting date in cell A2 to calculate end of the month in cell B2 using Excel formula. Which formula should she use? And she is presented with four different choices. Choice A, EO month, and then in parentheses, A2, comma, zero. Choice B, end month, and then in parentheses, A2, comma, one. Choice C, end of month, and then in parentheses, A2, comma, zero. And last but not least, choice D, date, and then in parentheses, end in quotes, comma, A2. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the answer. Maybe pause this video and give yourself 10 to 15 seconds. This is about as much time as you get on a real test. Ready or not, on my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it or have an alternative solution, please make sure to post in comments. Here's the snippet in Microsoft Excel where I try to recreate this scenario. In cell A2, we have a date. And in cell B2, we need to do the calculations using the formula to determine the end of the month, end of January. As you might have guessed, the correct answer here is the function EO month. Let's use it. I'm going to type equal sign and then end of month. And then you see that this function returns the serial number of the last day of the month before or after specified number of months. So let's enter the full name of the function. And then in parentheses, we have two values. We have start date, for which we will use A2. And then we have month. And this value helps us calculate the number of months from the current date. Let me explain. So if we enter zero here and hit enter, you see that it will calculate the end of January. But if I change the value from zero to one, it will calculate the end of February. And you can kind of go down the list. Let's do, let's just for fun do the end of March. For that, we enter two and you see that it calculated end of March. So the correct answer here is choice A, EO month, and then in parentheses, cell A2, comma zero. Do you have a better or alternative way to solve it? Please make sure to post your answer and rationale in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Excel features. Jeremy is building a tank for a treatment plan. When he calculated initial volume, it showed as 40,000 cubic meters. He needs to make sure the tank's volume is 50,000 cubic meters. And Jeremy can only adjust the height of the tank to meet the specifications. Which Excel feature should Jeremy use? And you're presented with the list of four choices. Choice A, consolidate. Choice B, flash fill, choice C, goal seek, and then choice D, none of the above. Take a close look at the snapshot provided with this question. You're presented with measurements of length, width, and height. And there's also information that volume is calculated as length multiplied by width multiplied by height. And then volume in the cell D3 is calculated as product of range B2 through B4. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time, maybe pause this video to see if you can come up with the solution. And on my end, I would like to move forward to share with you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here is the scenario simulated in Microsoft Excel. I believe that the best way to solve this challenge is to use Goal Seek feature of Microsoft Excel. Goal Seek feature in Excel is a part of What If Analysis tool and is used to find the desired result of a formula by changing the input value. Goal Seek can be accessed on the Data tab in the Forecast section in the Excel ribbon under the What If Analysis button. After you access Goal Seek feature, you are presented with the dialog box. In the Set cell, we have a value of the cell D3, which is the volume calculation. We need to change the volume. Our target volume is 50,000 cubic meters. So let's put this value into the two value section of the goal seek. And we need to get to the 50,000 cubic meters by changing the cell B4, which is the height. When we click OK, we are presented with the goal seek status dialog box. And here we just click OK. And you see that the volume was recalculated and the target height is 50. So the correct answer to the original question is choice C, goal seek. Do you know any other Excel features that can help Jeremy in his goal? 
please make sure to share in comments. Here's the very interesting Excel test question where you need to calculate the first day of the next month. One of the manufacturing plants in Houston is using Microsoft Excel to schedule their work. Which formula should scheduler use to calculate the first day of next month? You're presented with today's date, which is February 10th of 2023, and you have four different choices for the formula. Choice A, a month with the parameters a2, comma 0, plus 1. Choice B, using date formula. Choice C, using date formula, but with different arguments. And then last but not least, choice D, E months with the argument A2. Do you know the answer? Take a close look, as the answer to this question may not be obvious. Ready or not, I am moving forward on my end to simulate this scenario in Microsoft Excel to show you my version of the answer. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to post in comments. Here in Excel, we have current date, February 10th of 2023 in the cell A2. And I believe the correct formula here is E month with the following arguments. Let's first understand the end of month's formula because I believe that it leads us to the correct solution. And if you see closely, end of month returns a serial number of the last day of the month before or after special number of months. The first argument is the start date. And then the second argument is the number of month. If we pick the start date as today's date and then say zero as the end of the day of the current month, it will return us the last day in February, which would be February 28th of 2023. To get to the 1st of March, we need to add plus one to the result of this formula. So I believe the correct answer here is choice A, end of month, argument A2, zero as the month, plus one. What's interesting, end of month formula can also accept negative arguments. For example, if for a month we will put minus one, it will get us to the previous month, which was January. And by adding plus one, we got to the first of the current month. But if we remove plus one, we get to the January 31st of 2023. And if we use positive arguments, for example, plus one, or we don't need to specify the plus, just one, it will get us to the last day of the next month, which would be March 31st of 2023. Do you have any other uses of end of month formula besides scheduling? Please make sure to share in comments. Here's an amazing question to test your knowledge of Microsoft Excel features. You're presented with the set of data, which shows industry and number of people employed. Data table shows Texas employment in five key industries. And you need to determine the correct Excel feature used to display the percentage employed column. You have four different choices. Choices A, pie chart. Choice B, stacked bar chart. Choice C, advanced conditional formatting, and choice D, bar chart. Do you know the answer? Give yourself a little bit of time to see if you can come up with the solution. You typically get no more than 5 to 10 seconds to answer these types of questions on a test. On my end, I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to solve it, please make sure to share in comments. I believe that the correct answer here is choice C, advanced conditional formatting. And it is advanced because it is conditional formatting with data bars. Conditional formatting with data bars is a feature in Microsoft Excel that allows users to quickly visualize the relative size of values in the range of cells. It uses color code bars to represent the relative size of each value in the range, making it easier to compare values at a glance. Data bars can be used to highlight the values that are above or below a certain threshold, or to compare values across different categories. Now, let me share with you step-by-step -step instructions on how you can solve this challenge on the test. The first step is to analyze the data. What we see here is that we have data broken down by the industry. We have information technology, business services, education and health, leisure and hospitality, as well as manufacturing and number of employed people in each industry. 
So to calculate percentage of employed people using advanced conditional formatting with data bars, we need to create new column and format the title. So the title matches other titles in this data table. In the next step, we need to calculate the values to represent percentage of employed people. We need to calculate total using the sum formula in Excel. In the next step, we need to format the values as a percentage using percentage data type. Then we select newly calculated values and on Home tab, click Conditional Formatting. We point to the data bars and then click to either Solid Field or Gradient Field. In our case, it is a solid fill. Do you have a better way to solve it? Please make sure to share your step-by-step -step instructions in comments. Here's an interesting Microsoft Excel test question, which tests your knowledge of Excel formulas. You need to show how to add current date and time in Microsoft Excel using formula and then format it as long date. Do you know how to do it? Give yourself 5 to 10 seconds to see if you can come up with the formula. And I am going to move forward and show you the solution. In fact, the solution is very simple. All you need to do is type in the now function. Now function returns the date and time in the standard format. To format it as long date, you need to navigate to the Home ribbon tab and in the Number Format section, select the long date. Did you figure it out on your own? Hope you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. A lot of times you might get a question on how to sort data in Excel from smallest to largest. For example, you might be presented with the data set which shows student names and their grades on different subjects. Here on the screen we see the grades in physics, math, chemistry and biology. And we need to sort this data set based on the student names. To accomplish this task, we need to select the data set and in the Home tab, navigate to Sort and Filter and select Sort A to Z. This will rearrange the data in the alphabetical order based on the student name. An alternative solution might be to use custom sort. To use custom sort, you need to select the data, navigate to the Home tab, and then select Sort and Filter and then Custom Sort. Here you are presented with the screen where you need to select the column by which you are going to be sorting, and then select the order. In my case, I am going to select the column as math grade, and then in the order, I am going to select smallest to largest. Once I clicked OK, you see that the data set was rearranged from smallest to largest based on the values in the math column. Let's recap. To sort the data in Excel, you need to either use sort smallest to largest or custom sort functions. Hopefully you've nailed this question and now know how to answer similar problems on the test. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.